This is episode number nine with A.L. Matsai. Welcome to the Melissa Ambrosini Show. I'm your host, Melissa, best-selling author of Mastering Your Mean Girl, and I'm here to remind you that love is sexy, healthy is liberating, and wealthy isn't a dirty word. Each week, I'll be getting up close and personal with thought leaders from around the globe to uncover the habits, the habits mindsets, mindsets, tools, and rituals that they have used to become world class so that you can create epic change in your own life and become the best version of yourself possible. Are you ready, beautiful? is a sexual empowerment coach, international speaker, and author. He helps people use their sexual energy to unleash their full potential. Once they learn to love and accept themselves fully, they are able to express their highest gifts, help more people, and make more money. I first discovered AL's work through our mutual friend, Susanna. And once I heard him speak, I quickly went and read everything I could about him and his work. And I became obsessed with his work because what he is doing in the world is so important, which is why I know you guys are going to love this interview so much. In today's episode, we chat about how he came about to be a women's sexuality expert what his definition of orgasm is and how to become multi-orgasmic, how becoming orgasmic can raise your state of consciousness, the different types of orgasm and why one is more powerful than the other, how to have whole body orgasms that last for hours, why an orgasm is a spiritual experience, how to awaken the goddess within, why sexuality starts with you, how becoming orgasmic can change your life and business, how to skyrocket your health, the importance of the masculine and feminine energy and how to elegantly dance between the two, how to empower your man, plus so much more. You guys are going to love this interview so much. Don't forget to check out the show notes at www.melissaambrosini.com forward slash nine. Everything that AL and I mention will be in the show notes. So you don't have to worry about scribbling things down. We will put it all in the show notes for you. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this epic interview with the one and only AL Matsai. Al, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me, love. I'm really, really happy to share this amazing work with your audience. Before we dive in, can you share what you had for breakfast this morning with us? I had um, a very nice omelette with spring onion and uh, some soy sauce, gluten-free bread with avocado and Vegemite, um, artichokes and... And also another dish of artichokes, pine nuts, and um, Kalamata olives. So I love, I love my food. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> and yeah, obviously like free, free range organic. And I'm everything. totally coming to your place for breakfast. That sounds unbelievable. Awesome. <laughs> so I absolutely love your work and your book, Orgasm Unleashed, is just such a, a wealth of knowledge. But I've never met many men who are women's sexuality experts how did Mm. you get into this work Mm. it's a it's a great question and you know it's like maybe some women are listening and they're like oh it's like here's another guy that thinks that he knows about about women and whatever um so yeah it's like uh, i am endorsed by a few quite a few female sexual sexuality educators and men who does know what he's talking about um and I've I've been basically doing this all my life in one way or another. So I've I've always like loved and adored uh, women, and always I was always interested in more than just more than just having sex with them, but but you know, knowing them and healing them and supporting them and empowering them. And probably one of the one of the key experiences was watching a very traumatic, very very um, violent. Um, a rape scene uh, as a child, and when I've when I've watched it, I've I got I got slightly traumatized. But also, there was like a good effect from that that I 
promised myself, I vowed myself to obviously never do that, but also to, to really take care of women and heal women. So, so that has put me on a path of, of sexual healing that's been going on for 30 years. Wow. And was this, witnessing this rape scene, was this in person? Uh, no, that was, that was something that I've watched uh, in cinema, but the experience was as if I was there personally. So it was, had quite a profound effect on you, sounds like it. Yeah, it was, it was definitely very, very strong. And, and like I say, it was, it was traumatic. And not just traumatic, it's, it's basically, I, I also turned down my sexuality and my masculinity for years after that, because I thought that like any, any way that I'm expressing my sexuality is wrong and it's like the, what those men did. So in some ways, I, I became kind of like the nice guy, the, the guy that was the, like the women's friends and confidant, uh, but not the lover and not the, the, the boyfriend. So, so I was very safe for women, and that's why I, I gained the confidence of women. And, and my path also has been to acknowledge, integrate, express uh, my strong masculine side. And, and now this is something that I'm actually kind of like known for. Okay, so I'm a man who does a lot of work with women, but I'm not like a soft new age guy. Mm. You know, and, and women need need that from a man. Women need a man to have balls. So yeah, a man needs to be sensitive and yeah, a man needs to be to be receptive as well, which is the feminine. But the man also needs to have presence and direction and and grounding and so on. Mm, absolutely. It's there's that balance and there's that dance between the two. So, you know, for the men and the women, <laughs> it's it's that constant dance between the masculine and the feminine. So, yeah. how do we do that? How do we elegantly dance between the two? It's about embracing both, first of all. So, when I'm saying a man has to be a man, it doesn't mean or a woman has to be a woman. It doesn't mean that that we are only a man or a woman. It means that we are embracing both the masculine and the feminine. So the masculine is the part that is present. And for me, it's also very much a, a, the, the part which is leading. And the feminine, which is, is the part which is surrendering, feeling, and expressing. So if a man wants to be in his masculine, he needs to, to cultivate his presence and he needs to take decisions and lead. And if a woman needs to be in, wants to be in her feminine, she needs to let go of control, let go of deciding, let go of knowing and understanding, and instead focus on, on expressing and embodying um, feelings, emotions, body, senses, the world, basically. Okay? And, and again, it's about, it's about having both. But when you, in, for example, when, when a woman is in an, in, an, in an interaction with a man, she can choose to stop choosing if that makes sense. You, you can choose to let the man drive. And um, I think dancing is a really good, really good example of that. So I'm a, I'm a very, very avid dancer. Uh, I dance all of the, you know, conscious dancing things like five rhythms, ecstatic dance, movement medicine, open floor, and, and other modalities. And when I dance with a woman, for example, it's like I lead her to an experience that she couldn't have by herself. So many people dance by, by themselves and they have great experiences as, as I do. I dance by myself as well. But when I dance with a woman and suddenly she tries to, you know, swirl me. Swirl, is this, is this the world swirl? Like, you know, like uh, get somebody else in the, to move in circles. Yes. Um, my my uh, my uh, English is a, is a bonus for my uh, for the listeners. Uh, so so she tries to swell me, and I kind of like look at her, and it's like I'm like you know it's like do you want to actually can, do you want to let me drive, and do you want to surrender to my guidance? And it doesn't mean that the woman needs to to do that, but if she wants to surrender, and that's that's the feedback that I get from women that I dance with. She said I've ne I'm never able to surrender to a man, but with you I was able to to surrender with you in the dance. And it was, it was amazing. You no. Know? So, so that's what I invite both men and women to do, to, to both feel, which is the feminine, but also to lead. And, and when we embody our innate uh, energies, and for most men, uh, their innate energy is masculine. And for most women, their innate energy is feminine. I think there's a sense of, um, peace and also freedom 
that comes from that. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And in order for a woman to really let go and surrender to the masculine, they have to feel safe and secure and like they can let go and open up. So what if they don't feel that? So trust and surrender are not a black and white thing. There's, there's, there's a grayscale. There's a lot of levels of trust and surrender. And I would say that, that obviously, first of all, you need to kind of like be with somebody that you can at least trust to some level as a woman. Okay. So you're not, you know, going in a dark alley and, you know, surrendering to any man that, that can, that's coming on to you. But if you're with a man that at least you, you share some kind of love and connection, you need to, to allow him to make more decisions and you need to, in some ways, to accept and to receive his, his decisions, not blindly, you know, it's like if he takes you to a sushi restaurant and you hate sushi, you know, you tell him like, listen, dude, uh, I don't like sushi. But let him make the decision. Let him make the invitation. Let him guide and when you reflect, reflect it in a loving way, in a supportive way, not in a bitchy way. Okay, so some women, it's like, let the men, <laughs> there's a joke, I'm half Polish, so, so my, my dad uh, tells a lot of uh, Polish jokes, you know, and one of them would be, <clears throat> a Polish woman asks her, her husband a question, answers instead of him, and then tells him he was wrong. <laughs> So don't give him a hard time if he, you know, took you to a sushi restaurant and you don't like it. Instead, find relationship and human interaction is, is a constant evolving process. And, and nobody's born, you know, perfect at it. And I would say that, that the more you allow yourself to be led and guided, the, the happier you will become. And even if there's sometimes mistakes, it's, it's a mistake on, like, you know, the sushi restaurant mistake. It's mistakes on the way to empowerment in on the way to the presence of the man on the way to to the trust and surrender and the bliss of the woman because like seriously in dance and obviously in love making or in body walk sessions that i do women say that some of the biggest things that they got is the ability to surrender so to get back to your question um ask the man to decide for you ask the man to guide you and, and by the way, it, happened, it can happen with, between two men as well. I went with one of my best uh, friends yesterday, a guy who's a very like manly, manly guy, uh, to, to a really nice rooftop restaurant in Melbourne. And he was like, order for me. I trust you. And that make me, makes me so happy to hear that. You know, and I, I basically chose the whole like tapas, uh, tapas uh, dinner myself. And he loved it. And it's the same thing with, you know, it's like if I make love with a woman and she says, you know, it's like, I trust you and I trust your guidance. So, so you choose to receive, you choose to let go of control, you choose to let go of direction. And instead you're focusing on feeling and you're focusing on expressing. Mm, I love that. You'll have a very deep, open experience when we do, when we completely let go and let them take over and, um, yeah, just surrender to that moment. It's, it's really beautiful. I noticed that in my own relationship, you know, if I'm ever, you know, not present and not willing to surrender in that moment, then, you know, even lovemaking can hurt, but yeah. it's when I completely surrender, open my heart, trust that, it is like a godly experience. Yeah, totally. And, and I would add that, by the way, it's like a man can surrender to a woman as well, or a man can surrender to another, another man. And I gave an example of my friend, and also I gave an example of myself. Um, I attended a Watsu session. Watsu is water shiatsu. And that's, that's unbelievable modality. It's, it's so beautiful. So I was held by a woman in water, uh, sometimes underwater, you know, and, and I surrendered to her guidance. And for me, it was so liberating and so beautiful and so amazing not to make any decisions and instead to be guided and nurtured by a woman in a pool, in a, a body, body temperature pool. And, mm -hmm. and also in sexual relationship, you know, it's like a few weeks ago, I was 
<clears throat> I was, you know, doing a lot of work and sometimes I get to be my to-do list. I get, I am my project management system. I'm just, I'm just that. I'm just mind and tasks and projects. So I laid between my, my, I put my hand, my head on my partner's legs and she caressed me for half an hour. Mm, so, so it beautiful. took me, it took me half an hour to get back to my body and back, get back to, to presence, you know, and then I made love with her. Mm, absolutely. My husband does the same thing. You know, he'll, he'll la- just lay down and say, and you know, can you just pour all of your beautiful goddess feminine energy all over me and I'll just massage or tickle or stroke yeah. or something like that, that to help bring him back into his body because he's very, you know, during the day we're in our head and we're go, go, go and creating and doing all of these amazing things that we're doing. But, you know, sometimes that energy is a little bit harder to shift. So it's nice to come back into your body. Totally. So you talk about becoming orgasmic. What does that actually mean? And how can we become orgasmic? That's, that's obviously one of my biggest uh, focuses with the work that I do. And I say that when you expand your definition of orgasm, your orgasm will expand. Okay, and it's, it's, it's with everything. When you expand your definition of sex, your sex will expand. When you expand your definition of, of work and business and career, they will expand. And the problem is that most people think that they know based on their own experience or the experience of the mass culture. So speaking, speaking about women, and, and again, please excuse me for, gen, from, for generalizing, but it is, it is a kind of like a true generalization that most women experience orgasm, if they experience orgasm, is a very short, sharp peak of pleasure, followed by an immediate drop of pleasure, arousal, interest, um, and so on. So when I was, when I was you know, going down on women years ago, before I learned about this stuff, like a woman would have pleasure and then she would orgasm. And then she would push me away from, from, her, from her clit. I was going down on her and she would push me away. And I wouldn't, wouldn't understand why she's pushing me away. It's like, it's like, oh, but you were enjoying this when I was, you know, when I was going down on you a moment ago. And I, was, I would kind of like hold on to her pubes and try to kind of like keep, keep, you know, licking her and stuff. And she would be like, no, 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 it's hypersensitive. Did you resonate? Do you recognize this hypersensitive feeling? Absolutely. So, so the question is why? You know, stop and ask yourself why? That, that is the case. <clears throat> no, so, so the reason is that clitoral, uh, clitoral orgasm specifically are those kind of like short, sharp peaks of orgasm, and they're not the only kind of orgasm. And when, when there's clitoral stimulation and clitoral orgasm, the sexual energy is basically exploded and lost. So because the sexual energy is exploded and lost, uh, this is what creates this feeling of um, hypersensitivity. And it's also a feeling of like being done. So it's like, I had my orgasm, tick the box. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm done. On to the next thing. Yeah. It's like, get away from me now. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, I'm done. I'm good. Thank you very much. It's, it's been great. I had like, like how long is the clitoral pleasure? You know, 15 seconds, 20 seconds. You know, that's it. I'm good. And. For some women, there's also a feeling of um, frustration because they were building up towards something, but they've never received, they never actually experienced what they were yearning for. Because I would say that what women yearn for is not just a pleasure, but it's it's a surrender. And a clitoral orgasm, it's not so much about surrender. It's it's a very controlling one. There's, There's usually a lot of effort. So if you look at porn, for example, women rubbing their clit like, like, you know, very intensely or, or using very, very high powered vibrators or, or the man is, you know, going down very intensely on a woman. So if you also hear the sounds that the woman is, is making when she's um, building up towards a clitoral orgasm, it, it comes from the belly. It comes from, it, and it gets stuck in the throat and it sounds very forceful. So it's kind of like, ah, ah, ah. Okay, and I can I can hear a woman from you know it's like in a in a porn movie or, or a client you know laying down on the massage table and she's trying to push herself to orgasm, and instead there is another kind of orgasm, 
which we can call implosive, vaginal, G-spot, cervical, whole body, and, and so on. And this kind of orgasm is more round. Yeah, do, do you want to say something? Yeah, I was just going to say, is there three types of orgasm or is it just two? Is there more like of that, in, that, that clitoral, um, short, sharp, and then is it more deep with the cervical and the G-spot? Is there, just, is there two types or is there more? So there's two general types and then there's 20 or 30 like other like subtypes. And okay, again, right. I know it sounds I know it sounds very technical and don't worry about it. The main thing to remember is that there's the explosive orgasm and after the explosive orgasm, you know, there's a short and sharp peak and feeling of hypersensitivity in your clit, feeling of some people some women by the way I didn't mention that some women even get slightly down or even depressed. Uh, some women cannot have another orgasm for a few minutes or even hours. Um, and there's all this hormonal shift and changes and roller coasters following a clitoral orgasm. So women are already relatively to men, they're already more emotional, more prone to be controlled by the emotion. And clitoral orgasms make it even worse. Um, side note, it also increases um, uh, bleeding. When you're on your moon cycle or just off? Yeah. Oh, it increases the bleeding. Yeah. Right. Yeah, why is yeah, that? So, so, so bleeding is one of the ways that women, women lose energy. And, and, and menstruation is beautiful and sacred. But, you know, women are, are, are experience this, experiencing this for four, five, six, seven, eight days, not to mention all of the before and after, where, where they're losing a lot of their life force. This is probably like another, another conversation. <laughs> this, is, yeah. this, is, this is a, if, if there was ever a, a, a can of worms in conversation, this is, this is it. Cause, cause <laughs> literally some women are like, Oh, this man is telling me not to menstruate. And uh, no, darling, I'm not telling you not to menstruate. I'm still telling you your menstruation is amazing, but, but why not uh, decrease the loss of, of blood and energy and life force and mental acuity and, and all of the stuff. And just keep keep the sacred elements of this, but but uh, reduce the loss of it. So that's that's maybe we can we can go into it in another conversation. But but the thing with the clitoral orgasm, it creates an energy flow which is explosive, and it's basically removing energy from your body. And in tantra, which is the which is the tradition that I come from, we talk about about uh, keeping our energies in the body about uh, res not recycling, uh, circulating the energies in our body and also about sublimating it and harnessing it in our spiritual practice, in our daily life, in our relationship, in our creativity, in our business. Clitoral orgasms, again, they're not bad, they're not wrong, you're not evil for having them. But once you become more conscious of your energies, once you become more conscious of your mental, emotional state, you start to be aware that these are not serving you. Mm, that's so interesting. Uh, for many years, I didn't know that there was this other way because it's, it's very taboo and it's not spoken about, you know, at school or in personal development classes as a young girl or boy. And so I didn't know that there was any other way. And now reflecting back, you know, when I was having these clitoral orgasms and they were very short and sharp, I was just thinking just then as you were talking about how my moon cycle was at that time and it was very long and very heavy and draining. And now that I've been exposed to these deep cervical um, orgasms and, and, you know, oming and tantra and circulating that orgasmic energy, they're quite short, you know, four days, very light, comes and goes, almost don't even really notice it anymore, where I used to be crippled over in pain and not be able to get out of bed. So that's really interesting that, that uh, you know, the types of orgasms that we're having reflect in our moon cycle every month. It makes total sense. So, um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't even really put that together, but uh, it makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah, and it's it's also part of a larger issue. And by the way, we're still we're still talking about orgasm, and I, I'll get back to defining the the orgasm in a moment. But it's part of a, of a human condition, which is around not being able to hold energy. So men ejaculate because they're not able to hold the energy. Women have clitoral orgasms because they're not able to hold the energy, the intensity, the depth of um, 
of the energy of the, the stronger orgasmic states. Okay, the same thing with same thing with menstruation. Okay, so menstruation, like I think you said, the word cripples. Mm. Okay, so if a woman menstruates less, and there's 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 uh, examples in society of women who were very successful and powerful, and they were able to menstruate less. Um, so it's about it's about using your beautiful feminine energy in order to change the world. It's about using your your feminine energy in order to be a better mom. It's about to, to be a better woman to be more creative to share your highest gifts with the world and again like i said to change the world and most people are because of self-worth issues and self-belief issue and tall poppy syndrome and uh yente logan in, in scandinavia and so on people don't allow themselves to step up to the plate so they use sex as a way to de- deplete their energy they use clitoral stimulation food um, and other kind of other kind of unhealthy habits in order to drain their energy, so they don't have to deal with with increased level of energy. Does that make sense? Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm all for cultivating more energy to you know share more with the world. So this is totally up my alley. And I love you know what you're saying for the men. Um, you know, practicing that non-ejaculation and that circulating of that energy and funneling that energy into their creativity, I notice an absolute difference within my husband, you know, because he practices that and cultivating that that kundalini energy. And it's very different to when he does ejaculate. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's completely different. Um, so, you know, what would you say to someone who, you know, a woman – who would like to approach this type of thing with their partner, you know, if they go home today or, or this evening and they say, right, you're not going to ejaculate for the next 30 days. Like how can their husband might, or their partner might be like, excuse me. Um, so how can we approach this? I know you talk a lot about, you know, it starts with us and awakening our full orgasmic potential really does start with us. So that's a great place to start. But if someone does have a beautiful, open, loving partner, how can they approach this with them and, and maybe start to explore this with them? I'm going to, I'm going to relate to something you just said, which is, which is it's all start with you you know sexuality starts with you and if you want to have great sex first learn to have great sex with yourself what do you mean by that so i'll, I'll probably like let's 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 get back to the you know what to do with your man uh, piece later but i think for a woman to become orgasmic and that's that's my big message to to the world it's like in order for a woman to become orgasmic she needs to take things into her own hands into her own hands <laughs> okay so I get so many women that, that come to me and, and they want to be saved. They want to be rescued. They want to be healed. They want somebody else to do the work for them. And again, that's, that's like a theme. Um, or th- th- they're relying on something external, you know, so they have their vibrators and they have the few of clitoral orgasms and it's all external. And what I lead women, what I guide women in is to discover it themselves. So first of all, Self-pleasuring is a self-loving practice, as a self-empowering practice. Um, so some people would call it mast- masturbation and say, "Oh, you know, I'm already like I'm already like you know masturbating every morning, and I'm using my my vibrator, I'm having a few clitoral orgasms." And I'm saying it's not exactly that. It's about having a practice that, first of all, is non-clitoral, which means you're not dissipating, losing, exploding your sexual energies, and instead. You're cultivating them, you're harnessing them, you're circulating them in your body. Um, so that's so that's the first thing is basically letting go of the clitoral addiction. And I would say that most women are um, addicted to clitoral uh, orgasm in the same way that men are addicted to ejaculation. Because mm, it's that quick, sharp uh, fix. It's like the junk food, you know, that quick fix, that sugar high. Yeah. And, and it's, it's literally an addiction. It's like I work with women who are addicted to clitoral orgasms. Okay. I had one client who, are giving, who was giving herself a hundred clitoral orgasms every day. Oh my goodness. And side, side note, she was uh, suffering from, um, how is it called? Chronic fatigue. Wow. Yeah. Because it's just expelling so much energy, energy going out all the time. Yeah, exactly. And also, and by the way, I'm not saying that clitoral stimulation is bad. 
we love, I love the clitoris. We love the clitoris. The clitoris is amazing. But the idea is how to use clitoral stimulation, but not to have a clitoral orgasm. And use it so it doesn't deplete you like, and give you chronic fatigue like this woman. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the idea with the self-pleasuring practice is first of all, acknowledge your, <clears throat> a woman's need to acknowledge her dependency on a clitoral uh, orgasm, which is easy. Again, assuming that a woman can even have clitoral orgasms and some women can, cannot even have that. And, and this practice would help them as well. So this practice would help a woman whatever level she's, she's at. Um, and I also worked with women who thought they were really, really, really orgasmic um, or who were really, really orgasmic. And after working with me, they became even more orgasmic. So the idea with the self-pleasuring practice is to take at least 20 minutes every day um, to do self-pleasuring, to explore all of your body, to explore genital stimulation as well, and also to include internal stimulation. So starting with your fingers, first of all, insert your fingers um, into your vagina. And many women have a problem with that. Why do you think that is? Because society is uh, infantile. Mm, and it's taboo and it's, you know, it's dirty almost in inverted commas or it's rude yeah. or it's naughty. But one of the most beautiful things that you can do is cultivate the most gorgeous self-loving relationship with yourself and your body like this is our temple and I love yeah. what you say about becoming so in tune with your body and really getting to know your body I think it's so important and the more that we can love and respect our temple the less we will you know, trash it with, with junk food or with alcohol yeah. or with drugs or with junk food sex, you know, or, you know, one night stands and things like that. So that's when we cultivate so much respect and love for our body, we're less likely to treat it poorly. Totally. Totally. And I have clients, both male and female that are able to let go of, of, um, this kind of like obsessive quick fix behaviors thanks to this practice of self-pleasuring. Because once you're able to, to master or control or be aware of this need of, of instant gratification through sex, either through ejaculation or clitoral orgasm, you're also able to resist other temptations. So let me, let me just get, uh, I want to really give your, your, your listeners a lot of value to give them a really concrete practice, if that's okay. Absolutely. Go for it. So... Awesome. So it's about, first of all, letting go of clitoral orgasm, still having clitoral stimulation, but without the orgasm itself, and then exploring internal stimulation, first with your fingers, and then with a penis-shaped uh, object, and that, that can be a vegetable, or that can be um, a dildo, silicone dildo, glass dildo, but just not a vibrating one. Okay? And why is that? And again, with, because the vibrations numb the the vagina and it's also a very unnatural uh thing that the man uh, usually cannot provide i have one technique that does that but 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 again it's like most of the time it's something that men cannot provide mm -hmm. and it also takes to focus so it's, it's again it's this strong quick uh intense stimulation instead of developing awareness acuity sensitivity perception and so on so, so I really, really do not recommend uh, vibrators. Um, and also with the dildo thing, women start, start to practice and they're having a lot of resistance because uh, as I have started saying, society is infantile in its uh, relation to sexuality. Okay, so it's all external. So if you look at, if you look at uh, little girls, they rub themselves over anything. Yeah, have you seen like little girls basically mm. masturbate on like, toys and and you know the bed <clears throat> like anything which basically they can rub themselves on you've seen that have you seen that yeah yeah i have and they're, they're very fascinated aren't they they're kind of like what's what does this mean and they don't really understand and yeah it'd be great if if we could you know teach our children you know that what what this is about <laughs> yeah. from a very young age yeah, and I'm very passionate, by the way, around about um, sexual education for young young people and, and and their parents. But the point I'm making is that the point I'm making is that for youngsters, sexuality is external. 
Okay, also boys, they mm. discover their penis and they have an erection. And then they go into, into teenagehood and, you know, it's like girls actually start to masturbate and everything is external and men starts to, to you know, uh, teenagers start to jerk off and it's this infatuation with semen and, and, and the clitoris. Mm. The problem is that, is that most of society is still on that level. So if you look at porn, and porn is, porn is not just a problem, but it's also a symptom. So porn shows us what level society is on. So what you see 99% of the time in porn is focus on ejaculation. You know, a man would pull out an ejaculate. So you'd, you have to see the cum shot. You have to see semen. You have to see the white stuff to get your money's worth. And also with, with doing it, like what the woman receives is a lot of strong, hard, fast, and also a lot of clitoral, clitoral focused, clitoral stimulation, and also kind of like focused on the main erogenous zones of the body. And this is why I say it's like, this is a very infantile level of sexuality, because once you dip in sexuality, you understand it's not just about the clitoris, it's about inside your body. And it's not just about the hard, strong, fast but it's about the slow, the soft, and the subtle, as well as the strong and intense. It's that balance again, isn't it? It's, it's balance, and it's, I, I would say there's a, there's a deeper word, which is another word, which is um, a range. It's understanding that sexuality is a range. It's not a black and a white thing. So, so going, going, going back to women, women have a lot of issues and resistance from inserting something to their vagina because they think it's wrong. They think it's dirty. They think it's bad. <clears throat> they 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 think like I'm like I'm a slut for you know masturbating with a zucchini, you know I'm like I'm I'm like what would you know what would my mom say or something like that? Mm. And I literally worked with women who day after day try to insert something into their vagina, and you know it's like oh they, they don't feel aroused they don't feel ready they don't feel that it's right, and it's all psychological. It's let's say ninety percent psychological, and once the women are able to. Ah, yeah, that's, that's another thing. Women are very much, with this clitoral stimulation, they're very much genital focused, exactly like the porn movies and exactly like men. You know, it's like, how many times did you have men, uh, obviously before your husband, we know your husband is, is not that, but before your husband came to you and attacked your, your breast, like, you know, attacked your nipples and then attacked your clitoris, went full power oh and then gosh, tried yeah. to either finger you or penetrate you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It, it honestly, I have had moments in the past where it has felt exactly like that, like, yeah, attack almost. Yeah. And, and honestly, this is what women are doing to themselves as well. So instead of arousing their body, instead of building that connection and love and arousal and pleasure of, all over their body, women go straight for the kill. So I teach women to not just to masturbate, but really to self-love and self-pleasure. And that might include um, a sexy dance that they do by themselves to some really nice music for like 20 minutes. And that might include a bath or a shower. And that might include rubbing oil over all of their body. So it's really about love, making love with yourself. So, so then you get your body to want to be penetrated. You, you, masturbate around or your self-pleasure around the, your external vagina in order to get your yoni to want to have something inside. So if you recognize this feeling of like the vagina is nearly like, like lovingly, positively painful because she wants to be filled. You notice this feeling of it's like, it's like, oh, it's like, I want something inside me now. Mm. And it's that warming up. And I love yeah. that you say, you know, it's not about masturbation. It's self-love and self-pleasure. Yeah. It's about honoring yourself and yeah. it's a beautiful thing. And we don't have to, there doesn't have to be so much dogma and it doesn't have to be taboo. Like get over it. This is about cultivating a beautiful, loving relationship with yourself and your body. Yeah. And so this practice done every day for at least 30 days, and when I say at least, I usually mean double or triple that, you know, this is something that has changed my, my client's life and my student's life and the readers of the book's life. And I get emails from, from women. I remember this one woman from a small town, kind of like Bible Belt, <clears throat> um, hardly had any orgasms in her life, read a few of the articles that, that were in the book took the kids to her, to her mom, went back home, started to self-pleasure, and she had 
multiple G-spot orgasms and female ejaculation and she cried and she laughed and she basically had this experience for hours. <laughs> so, so not all women can have this on the first go and some women would literally need to go through a month of doing that. And uh, my book is called, you know, Orgasm Unleashed, uh, Your Guide to Pleasure, Healing and Power. So it's about exploring all of these elements. It's about exploring different kinds of pleasure. It's about exploring healing. It's ab about exploring self-love. And it's also about empowerment because this practice is a practice that, em that empowers women. First of all, obviously empowers them sexually, makes them more healthy. And, and you know how, much, how many... Uh, issues women have with cysts and cancers and so on in their female parts. Um, it's about empowering women uh, outside of the bedroom as well. It's about wellness. It's about uh, creativity because sexual energy is creative energy. So really this practice, it, which is an inclusive practice. Okay, you mentioned earlier pract another practice which only focuses on the, uh, on the fucking upper left quadrant of the clitoris. And that's while that is okay for what it is, I teach a practice which is inclusive, holistic, and more mature in, in in its in its recognition of a woman's you know whole vagina and whole body and whole body and mind and soul. Mm, beautiful. So, how can we get our men lovingly to experiment with us or be open to? to this type of uh, play, so to speak, you know, what would you suggest? We, how would you suggest we approach this? Approach this by, with ourselves or approach this with our partners? With our partners. So once we have kind of really got it sorted within ourselves, because, you know, like you said, it all starts with you and I absolutely 100% agree with you on that. And then when we would like to invite um, um, our partner to explore this with us, how do we approach it without kind of um, demasculating them? Okay. So it's, it's about the woman doing her own work and um, becoming multi-orgasmic and doing a self-pleasuring and this is something that would attract her men to want to share that with her you know so if you are self-pleasuring in the morning moaning shouting writhing making the bed make noises um wetting the bed with your beautiful vaginal juices and your man is you know around and he's noticing that he would want to have you know to have part in that so so you tell him yes i'm doing this work would you like to learn how to make me orgasm so you don't tell him, you invite him. So a woman doesn't so much uh, direct, a woman seduces. So seduce your man to take part in this and say, say again, would you like to learn how to make me orgasmic? Would you like to, to fuck me so well? I say fuck with a, lot of, with a lot of love and respect and honor. So would you like to fuck me so well that, I'm, that I'll be melting in your arms? So what man wouldn't want to, to, to do that? And by the way, if one man doesn't want to do that, it's not the right man for you. Um, so first of all, you invite him and then he will say, yeah, okay, I'd like to do that. And then you say, it's like, okay, one of the things you, you can do is learn how to last longer. And listen, I've, I've heard about this, you know, Tantra teacher that teaches men how to last as long as they want and to have multiple orgasms. Wouldn't you like to have multiple orgasms as a man? Again, you ask him, you invite him. And again, I'm assuming that the man will be like, yeah, sure, I'd love to have multiple orgasms. I'd love to have more pleasure. And then you say, it's like, okay, go to Eyal's website and, and you know, there's a, there's a free training, um, videos and text files and so on, mainly videos. Um, and he can get, get started on this practice. Okay, so, so if you go to intimatepower.com, um, there is on the, on the sidebar, you will find like a, a free ejaculation control program. And I can also uh, put it in the show notes, send you the link. So, so your ladies can share this with, with your men. Absolutely. We'll put everything that we've mentioned so far in this episode, in the show notes. So you don't have to worry about jotting things down if you're driving or anything like yeah. that. But I love what you said. Everything, like, like everything in life, it's an invitation. And the more work that you do 
within yourself and whether that's in the bedroom or, you know, with your belief systems or whatever area, it's reflected out in all of the different areas. The more you work on yourself, it's going to radiate out into every area of your life. And that is is what I love about your work. It will ripple effect out into every area. So I wanted to ask you, what's one thing that you're working on or would like to improve within yourself at the moment? And maybe it's something that you're, yeah, just currently working on. So I think the the person at the sexual level is very going very very well. On the um, on the professional level, I'm working on getting this message uh, and turning it into a movement. So I'm working on something called the real sexual revolution, or the real sexual revolution movement, and this is about bringing sexual education and empowerment to the masses. And this is this is taking my ideas, my practices, the practices that have worked so well for so many women and men, and really taking it to the next next level where it's been talked about in main media and when there's practitioners who are doing my work. Because obviously there's there's many different deeper levels of the work. Uh, it's about getting orgasm unleashed, the book that I've published into the, the, the hands of millions of women. Because I envision a world where a woman gets it to her, you know, 14th birthday or something like that. Mm, it's a great idea. You know, so, so really it's about, I'm learning how to, how to do this work. And I'm, by the way, very open to cooperate with coaches, teachers, leaders, and not just in the sexuality field, but any person who works with, with people, Okay, with any kind of, you know, holistic coaching, healing, wellness, uh, personal development, even even spiritual uh, teaching, because that's part of that as well. Mm, that's that's amazing. And what's something that you like within yourself, like that's, you know, what you're working on in your business, but what's something within yourself that you might, that you're currently struggling with or that you're currently wanting to really move through? Have you got anything that you're currently quite, mindful of uh working on well i have to say that my life is my life is always quite amazing and i'm and i'm i'm as a, as a lifestyle choice and again this is one of the things i work with with clients because this is what i do in my personal life i live my life as a way to express myself and my gifts and my hobbies and my passions so i can't say that i'm really dealing with anything like major in life i'm my my mission and my business are very much part of what I do. So there's not so much um, separation between the personal and, and the professional. So because because I'm I'm doing kind of like I'm on my mission. Um, this is not something that's that is separate, you know. And that's that's another thing that that is one of my messages that sexuality is something that affects all of your life, and there's no um, there's no separation between the personal and, and the professional. They're all connected. Uh, mm-hmm. If I have to pick something, I'm probably probably working on going into into a deeper deeper relationship, deeper romantic relationship. I've been with uh, many women and have had many many meaningful experiences with women, and now I'm in a, just started a relationship with a woman, and it is just mind blowing. So I'm I'm staying until the middle of the night because she's on a different continent and. Uh, and putting a lot of a lot of focus on on that. So it's not a struggle, it's a beautiful uh, journey. Beautiful. Now let's pretend you have a magic wand. I do have a magic wand. <laughs> not that kind of wand. Um, but let's pretend you have a magic wand and you could put one book in the school curriculum in every single high school around the world. Now this is besides your book, <laughs> Un- Orgasm Unleashed. Unleashed. That yeah. is already in the school curriculum. What awesome. would be one book that you would put in the school curriculum for every single uh, teenager all around the world? Easy answer. Very easy answer. So I've been, you know, like you, you have ideas throughout your life and you, you say some things or you resonate with some things that some people say, and suddenly you'll find like a book or a methodology that you go like, oh my God, I've been saying this all my life. You know, you know yeah. when this, this happens? So I've discovered uh, stoicism. And together with all of the spiritual practice that I do, Advaita Vedanta, teachings of non-duality, uh, and so on, uh, Stoicism is is basically the way of of my life. And there's a, there's a book which is called The Obstacles is the Way by an amazing guy called Ryan Holiday. 
and this is a book about about how to live your life as a creator and not as somebody who's just reacting to life. So how to really create your life, how to be in control of yourself and your emotions and turn adversity into your friend. So mm. it sounds a little bit masculine, but it's also about flow and surrender. Okay, I would recommend this, this book to everyone. And literally, if there was like a version of the book that was taught to eight-year-olds, that this would be amazing. Because society, again, as a juvenile society, it's very reactive and very childish. You know, so yeah. a man, you know, a very masculine, you know, muscle man that goes into a fight in, at a bar, he's not being a man. He's being, he's being a little girl who's, who's just, or a little boy who's like just reacting. Okay, so it's yeah. really about developing character. Yeah, I love that book. Thank you. And I'll pop that in the show notes. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about how your day looks. Now, do you have any morning routines and how does that look? How do you set yourself up for success and how do you prime yourself for the day? Because I am fascinated by people that I admire and love and look up to and who are very successful and what their morning routine is. So can you talk us through your morning routine? Yes. Um... So I try to get a good night's sleep and, and this is something that is sometimes overlooked. So I try to get my, my at least six hours and if I can, you know, seven or eight hours. And I also sleep in the afternoon and my, uh, you know, it's like I have a booking, booking service online and nobody can book me in the afternoon. Okay. So this is, this is, this is not just sleep, but it's rest and reading and so on. So that's, that's also like a routine. Um, when I wake up in the morning, I do a few yogic, um, uh, purification, um, actions. Okay. So not, not just brushing my teeth. So there's, there's a few, a few of them. Um, uh, there are times in my life where I self pleasure more. So let's say in an ideal day, at least three, three times a week, I'll be self pleasuring first thing in the morning. And again, self pleasuring without ejaculating. That's, that's the idea. And what um, are the yogic uh, <clears throat> techniques that you do? So, for example, I'm scraping my tongue. Mm -hmm. I do that too. I love that. Yeah, it's like I, it's like I cannot start my day without scraping my tongue and and uh, washing my uh, mouth with salt. So, salt grabs everything in my mouth and really cleans it. Um, in the past, I used, also used to do jalanetti, which is uh, running uh, lukewarm salty water through my nose. Um, another, just to, just to give another idea of yogic practices, I don't do this so often, but there's also, uh, Vamana, Vamana Dauti, which is, uh, a form of cleansing your stomach with, with water, which is a very, very beautiful practice. Um, and obviously brushing my teeth. Often I, I would take a cold shower and I know cold shower sounds a bit intense, but there, it's just a beautiful practice and it has a lot of, um, beautiful health effects as well. Mm, um, it's really, it's really great for your health and your body and your wellness. It really um, strengthens your mitochondria. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, by the way, I do this even in cold Melbourne in winter, you know, so, so yeah, Melbourne can be really cold in winter. So I do this as well. Um, so I usually meditate first thing in the morning as well. After my, after my purification, um, I do a form of, um, mindfulness uh, meditation. Uh, I drink um, two or three glasses of water. I do some stretching. I do some exercise. Uh, sometimes in my life, I also have a morning walk in nature. And then I get into, first of all, into uh, clearing my energy with uh, a combination of kinesiology and Chinese medicine and stuff like this. It's a, it's a, it's a system called the spiral. Uh, which I do again first thing when I when I sit in at my computer. I have a gratitude practice where I write around three to five things which I'm grateful for, and sometimes it is even simple things like it's gray, it's rainy, it's cold, and I love it. So it's not just oh yeah, it's it's sunny today and it's so nice. No, it's like celebrating everything in life. Um, so there's a gratitude practice. There's some, there's some writing at least. Ah, you know what? If there's something that I'm trying to do more is more writing. Okay. That's, that's definitely something I'm trying to do more of. Um, so yeah, these are some of my rituals. And then I try to watch the sunset and have a sunset walk or a jog or a run 
every sunset and I literally change my availability throughout the, the, the year depending on the time of the sunset. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. what's the spiral technique that you spoke about? So um, that's available at uh, clearyourshit.com. <laughs> so you can learn that uh, by yourself. It's a combination of kinesiology, spiral dynamics, the Chinese uh, meridian system, the chakra system, uh, coaching, NLP, probably a few other modalities as well. So that's... That's let's say when clients sign up up to my coaching, I send them to one of my coaches that takes them through the spiral because I believe in that so much. So so it's a good it's a good system. Awesome. I'll have to check that out. Yeah. So speaking of gratitude, what are three things you're most recently grateful for in your life right now? So this new relationship that I'm starting is really is really amazing. Okay. And uh that's that's amazing that uh yeah the, the, this you know let's <laughs> let's talk in a few months and see how that uh evolves but but it's really really amazing even as it is another thing that i'm really grateful for is my dance practice so again i'm a very very avid dancer i literally just spent 10 days in amsterdam and had four conscious dance events and it's four ecstatic dance events uh and another one immediately when i came back to uh to melbourne so i love my my dance practice. A um, few other things that I'm grateful for in my life. So I'm grateful to be able to live my life in a way that allows me to do what I love, to help other people and to make money from that. And I think that's really the holy trinity for me. So oh, beautiful. So I'm free to travel the world. I'm free to, to you know, I'm going to Byron Bay tomorrow and speaking at the, at the, at the conference. Uh, holding a very beautiful, very special session, by the way, at, um, at uh, the conference, holding workshops around Australia and around the world. I'm, I'm very, very grateful for my life. Beautiful. Now, if you, in your opinion, I would love to know what is one of the most important things that you can do for your health that people can start to do today? What's one of the most important things that they could do for their health? Love themselves and stop being so hard on themselves. Mm. Uh, apart from self pleasure, apart from self pleasuring, you know, but but again, people focus so much on it's like you know, like my my parents are hilarious. My mom keeps saying it's like this is healthy, this is not healthy, this is healthy, this is not healthy. But the way of life is not really healthy. This is something that I've been journeying with with myself, and and for me, self love comes before everything. So so I've become much easier on myself, and this is why I'm easier on other people as well. And people reflect it to me. It's like, oh yeah, something changed about you. Like, yeah, you're damn right it did. Because I, I, I don't have the, the the critic in my head so much, and I used to have it so so loud, you know. So now, if I don't finish whatever my to do list for the day, I'm like, yeah, it's okay. And I'm I'm not complacent, but I'm mm. celebrating whatever I have and whatever I do. Sounds like you've mastered your bad boy. That's for sure. You're in a bad boy. Yeah. <laughs> So what's one of the most important things you could do for wealth? And when I say wealth, I mean, you know, your career and what you do in the world. What's one of the most important things you could do for that area of your life? Again, mindset. So I actually work, people know me as a sexual uh, empowerment coach, but actually work with uh, mainly women around their, again, doing what they love, helping people and making money. And the main thing about wealth, first of all, changing your mindset around wealth, because um, people get focused on the tactics and the techniques like, ah, we need to do Facebook advertisement. We heard Facebook, ad Facebook advertising are really important. Oh, we need to put flyers. Oh, you know, it's like, so it's all tactics, but maybe they have a voice in their head that says money is bad. Making money is bad. Rich people are evil. If I become rich, I will become, I will lose my friends. If I become rich, I will not be spiritual. So there's a lot of either or dynamics that people are running. So, so sometimes it, I literally need two or three sessions with a person in order to change the wealth mindset before their actions. And through that, I was able to help some clients to double or even to triple their coaching rates. Okay. So it all starts with mindset. And after the mindset, yes, go for, for doing what you love. Go for offering maximum value to people. 
and, and obviously there's, there's, there's much more uh, uh, to that, saving, investing, and, and so on, you know, three buckets and all of this stuff. But it starts with mindset. You're talking my language, babe. It's definitely. So <laughs> finally, the last question, what is one of the most important things that you could do for love? So for your love for yourself and love for other people in your relationships? So self-love is the, fir- is the first one. Okay, so it's, it's kind of like, so when you love yourself, you'll be able to love others more. Um, and I would say there's, it's, it's, it's a little bit of a, of a yogic technique as well and something that I use in sexual healing, which is about projecting yourself to the other person's body or like we usually say projecting yourself to the other person's shoes. You know, but um, for me, it's like, for example, with this, with this man friend of mine that I met yesterday, I love this guy. It's one of my biggest loves of my life is this, this man, you know? And for me, it's like, I'm like, I'm like, what can I do to have this experience the best that, that, that I can for both of us? And by the way, love, sometimes we talk about, you know, sacrificing yourself and only seeing the other person. But I believe that, that there's a beautiful experience, which is, which is love, which is shared. So you're not sacrificing yourself, but both of you are shining and expressing yourself um, and receiving each other in the, the, in an experience of love. Okay. So, so it's about serving in another from a full place, not from an empty place. Thank you so much for sharing that. And before we wrap up, I just wanted to acknowledge you and say thank you and express my gratitude for you and the work that you do in the world. It is so important and which is why I wanted to bring you on the show and and why I love your book and and the work that you're doing what you're doing is matters it's really important and I'm so grateful to have crossed paths with you and to have you in my life and I'm so grateful for all the healing and the love that you're spreading into the world so thank you so much from the bottom of my heart I'm deeply grateful thank you very much love and it's thanks to people like you that this work spreads you know, so so we need people like you that that actually are willing to do the, the, these conversations because some women would not have a man on their show talking about female orgasm and menstruation. <laughs> so yeah, so I really acknowledge that, and uh, the listeners are welcome to you know read. There's, there's a sample of the book on the website uh, orgasmunleashed.com, so they can have a they can have a look at that. Really connect with me if you have questions, if you have anything that come up from this conversation, even even if you're triggered, you know, let me know, you know, so contact me through the website and let me know. I'll be happy to hear. And we'll put all of those details in the show notes and everyone can reach out to you and check out your awesome resources. So thank you again so much and we'll speak soon. So much goodness right there. Go and grab his book, Orgasm Unleashed, and dive into some beautiful self-loving practices and cultivate that beautiful relationship with yourself. I love that he says it all begins with us. If we want to inspire or empower anyone else, our lovers or anyone, our children, it always comes back to us. So remember that it's really important. So if you loved today's interview, please subscribe and leave me a five-star review because that helps our message get out into the world to more goddesses all around the world. And don't forget to tell me on Twitter who you would like me to interview and make sure you tag me at Mel underscore Ambrosini and the person you want me to interview using the hashtag the Melissa Ambrosini show. And for everything that we mentioned in the podcast, Go and check out the show notes, www.melissaambrosini.com forward slash nine. And you can go and check out all the other podcasts at melissaambrosini.com forward slash podcast. Thank you so much for being here and being so willing to want to grow and evolve and be the best version of yourself. I truly honor you and bow down to you. I love, love, love people who are just so willing to grow and learn and you are one of those people. So give yourself a little pat on the back. Now, if there is someone in your life that you think would really benefit from this episode, please share it with them right now. Forward it on to them so that they can awaken the goddess 
within and cultivate a beautiful relationship with themselves. And until next time, my beautiful soul sister, don't forget that love is sexy, healthy is liberating, and wealthy isn't a dirty word.